Amy Goodman with Anjali Comet. Welcome, everyone. Lead in lipstick, coal tar in shampoo. Do you know what's in the personal care products that you use? For the first time in 70 years, lawmakers are looking to close the gaping holes in the outdated federal law that allows toxic chemicals linked to cancer, birth defects, learning disabilities, and other illnesses in the products we use in our bodies every day. These include lotions, lipstick, deodorants, colognes, hair products, and even baby shampoos. Congresswoman Jan Schakowsky introduced legislation Tuesday night that would toughen safety standards for beauty products and require regular government testing for hazardous ingredients. The bill also mandates full ingredient disclosure and gives the FDA the ability to order recalls of dangerous products. There are over 12,000 chemicals in personal care products, but the average consumer has no way of knowing which are safe. Currently, it's only the $50 billion beauty industry that decides which ingredients are safe and can order recalls. Well, today, the Campaign for Safe Cosmetics launched a video called The Story of Cosmetics, produced by Annie Leonard, creator of the viral hit The Story of Stuff. Here's an excerpt. At the store, the choices seem endless. I can get lipstick in 49 shades, or shampoo for hair that's too dry, oily, fine, limp, or frizzy. But what about the choices that really matter, like the choice to buy products that are safe? It turns out the important decisions don't happen when I choose to take a product off the shelf. They happen when companies and governments decide what products should go on the shelves. So who are these companies? This is Procter & Gamble. They're the ones offering me herbal essences, the number two shampoo in the country. It contains toxic petrochemicals made from oil. Since when is oil an herb? On cosmetics labels, words like herbal, natural, even organic have no legal definition. That means that anybody can put anything in a bottle and call it natural, and they do. I mean, can you imagine a top seller called Petro Essences? Gross. What's even nastier are hair relaxers marketed to five-year-olds and skin whitening creams. These are super toxic, both in their ingredients and in the message they send about what beauty is. Ooh, here's Estee Lauder offering me a chance to help find a cure for breast cancer. That's nice. But wait, they're also using chemicals linked to cancer. Don't you think the best way for Estee Lauder to fight cancer is to stop using those chemicals in the first place? So really, I get to choose between meaningless claims on a bottle. But these guys get the real choice about what goes into those bottles. And that happens back here, at the factories where they're formulated. Why do the makers of these products use all these toxics? Are they trying to poison us? No, they're just working from a 1950s mindset when people were totally swept up in better living through chemistry. In all that excitement, they forgot to worry about human health impacts. That was years ago, and they are still using these same old toxic chemicals. Today, big cosmetics companies say the doses of poison in their products are small enough to be harmless. Yeah, maybe if you use them once a year. I guess they never get out and see that their products are being used and combined with other products every day. A little toxic dose under your arms, a little more on your hair, on your lips. And workers in nail and hair salons get dosed all day long. So the industry is used to doing things this way. And they can. Because even now that scientists have linked the chemicals they're using to all sorts of problems, there are no laws to get rid of them. You're thinking, really? Come on, nobody's making sure that the stuff we smear all over our bodies is safe? Nope. The FDA doesn't even assess the safety of personal care products or their ingredients. Since 1938, they've banned just eight out of over 12,000 ingredients used in cosmetics. They don't even require that all of the ingredients be listed on the label. That excerpt from Annie Leonard's new video, The Story of Cosmetics, available in full at, cosmetics at storyofcosmetics.org. Well, the new bill introduced by Congresswoman Schakowsky aims to close many of the current loopholes. But the cosmetic industry's own trade group also announced last week it, too, is interested in having a formal process for the FDA to review the safety of ingredients. In a statement released last week, Leslie Westline, the president and CEO of the Personal Care Products Council, said, quote, for decades, the industry has had an impeccable safety record under the existing requirements implemented by FDA under the Federal Food, Drug and Cosmetic Act. Our products remain among the safest in the marketplace. Nonetheless, we believe it is time to develop a more contemporary approach that includes a greater federal regulatory role. 
Well, for more on the toxic chemicals and beauty products and the need for effective legislation and oversight of the cosmetics industry, we're joined by two guests. Joining us from the University of California Berkeley studio is Stacey Malkin. She's co-founder of Campaign for Safe Cosmetics and author of Not Just a Pretty Face, The Ugly Side of the Beauty Industry. And we're joined from Washington, D.C., by John Bailey. He's the chief scientist at the Personal Care Products Council. He formerly worked at the FDA for 30 years. We welcome you both to Democracy Now! Stacey Malkin, let's begin with you. Can you explain what legislation was introduced last night, Tuesday night, uh, by Jan Schakowsky? Sure. Thanks for having me, Amy. I'm so happy to have this opportunity to talk about this landmark legislation. And the first thing I want to do is urge your viewers to please call your legislators and ask them to co-sponsor and support Jan Strakowski's bill, the, Camp the um, Safe Cosmetics Act of 2010. Um, as was mentioned earlier, the bill would require that companies phase out chemicals linked to cancer, birth defects, and other harmful health effects, would set up a safety system to assess the chemicals for safety for the first time. This hasn't been a requirement. Companies do not have to tell us everything that's in their products, and they don't have to assess them for safety. So this is critical legislation for all of our health. It's so important that we move away from chemicals that are contributing to cancer, learning disabilities, rising rates of asthma, allergies, and other diseases that are becoming epidemic. And I think it's so